Pulse 95. 95. Make a hot a cup of tea and relax. It's afternoon Karak with Abdul Kareem. You're listening to Pulse 95. Pulse 95. Hello and welcome back. You're listening to Afternoon Karak with myself, Abdul Karim Hanif. Now, today we're taking a little bit of a musical turn with the episode. We're talking to a, a an artist and a singer and a rapper who rose to fame after his single called Problems, and it was released in 2016. And since then has over 117 million views on his YouTube page. He is an artist who did not have to rely on the traditional mediums such as radio, to promote his music. Now, this is my interview with the rapper named Ricardo Valentine, or his stage name as Black, and it's about his life and how he rose to fame. I caught up with him during his uh, outing out here in Dubai, or as part of which was part of his international tour, and this was his trip to before before his trip to Lebanon, uh, uh, London, and Berlin. But yeah, he were, he was here in Dubai, and this is what he had to say about his uh, performance and. Uh, uh, his him being on an international tour at the young age of 26. I've got to start this conversation now. You, 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 your stage name is Black. Now it starts with the six. I'm sure it must be really annoying for you when people say six lakh. Uh, tell me about how it all came, the name came about, and uh, how would you like people to remember you at the moment? Um, I had the name since middle school, so by the time that the internet got a hold of it i already knew the millions of ways that it could have been pronounced or taken i had already like went through that a long time ago but um it's not really as annoying as most people think it is i make merchandise and that merchandise sells really well with the black pronounced black and i'm thinking about even making merchandise for people who don't want to pronounce it right it's like here if you don't want to say it here's a shirt that says six black and you can say whatever you want that's still my name at the end of the day you really don't mind. So now tell me about the, uh, the how your career started. Now we know your real name is Ricardo. Uh, now you grew up in certain parts of in Atlanta, and uh, you, you, that this is where you got your name from, pretty much. Now talk to me about how this whole started and this journey that you've been on. Yeah, I grew up on the east side of Atlanta, which is named they call it Zone Six, uh, hence where the six came from. It was just like a reoccurring number in my life, so I adopted my favorite number, my favorite color, put them together. And that was my name. And as far as just uh, the come up in Atlanta, it was honestly taking my my rap skills and just sharpening them through battle rap and through showcases and through just being in certain areas and on certain scenes. And even at school, just like rapping as much as I can, writing as much as I can until the point where when I dropped my first song, there was an audience waiting. Talk to me about who inspired you in your career and you know how this all started this, this journey to to embark on it because you know a lot of, a lot of artists have been using a number and a name as well 50 cent two pack so tell me about how this all, all came about for you um as far as the name inspiration goes it was more so just like a neighborhood thing and that was dubbed that way but as far as musically um i had a lot of inspiration from a lot of different people from a lot of different eras from Erica Badu to Sade to newer uh, people during a time like The Dream and T-Pain and then during my college time it was uh, the emergence of Frank and of The Weeknd of Janae Aiko and like all these different sounds along the way where I was just like I don't have to do what's traditional I can just use my voice you know. Your first album, or your first song, your single, Problems. Now, it hit 115 million views on YouTube as well. Now, a lot of your music does derive from relationship issues. Now, being a songwriter, how does that help you in bringing it all out? And are you okay with the situations now? Yeah, I mean, I like to keep my music super personal. I think what people love me for and respect me for is my honesty. So I don't think that changing that or looking to change anything in that is something I should do personally. It's like, I, I got here by being honest. I want to continue to be honest, and I see the reaction from being honest when I have shows and people come up to me and let me know like how they feel about my music. We will be taking a short break as we continue our conversation with Black. This is The Afternoon Karak on Pulse95. Pulse 95. Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Abdul Karim. On Pulse 95. 
Hello and welcome back to the Afternoon Karak. This is a show focusing on all things sports, adventure, careers and current affairs. Today it's all about music. I am playing my conversation with the American rapper Black, who was in the country for a performance as part of an international tour. Now after his brief stay in the UAE, Black was off to Lebanon, Germany and then eventually to the UK. Only 26 years of age, traveling around the world already, I spoke to him about balancing his role as an artist and a new father as well and here's what he had to say now for an artist upcoming artist as well some people describe you as uh, is it really important to have your songs being played on the radio or is the usage of digital world now really helping uh, artists to emerge and and really reach international recognition that you've got yeah I, I focus more so just on making like what I feel and if something in that realm you know, happens to be radio friendly, then that's perfect. Like when I made problems, I didn't think this is gonna be a radio hit or an internet hit. I just said, I wanna make this song. And then when I made it, it blew up. And I'm like, okay, well now it's a plus that it's on the radio. Now it's a plus that it's viral, you know? So I think you, when you do, you know, what you're supposed to do, you can figure out like what your lane or what your angle is later on. Yeah, now you've been in Australia and New Zealand before coming here and you're eventually going to Beirut. What a wonderful uh, way to understand and realize that your international fame has just grown. Um, yeah, I, I think starting off, it all starts off as like a fantasy or a dream. Like one day I'll be an entertainer and one day I'll travel the world. And then you end up doing it and you realize it might sound like a little cliche, but like you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. Like I thought about this in middle school and high school and elementary school. And today I'm sitting in the UAE having you know, an interview. Now you've worked with uh, renowned artists such as J. Cole as well. Your video just got recently launched as well. So talk to me about who you would like to work with now and uh, you know, where do you see your career progressing? Uh, who wouldn't want to work with like Beyonce or R Rihanna? Yeah. Um, love to work with Kendrick. When I was working on my first album, we were in the same building. He was working on an album at the same time. We just were in separate spaces. But uh, Kendrick would be dope. Um, I'm open to anybody as long as like when we meet the vibe is right okay, so I went through one of your interviews uh, and you said that you know you, you uh, black is more than a stage name for you now Ricardo is what you hold on to until you get what you need to get done what does that mean um I mean I've I've just been like my stage name most of my life and that's you know what people have known me for that's what um, that's where I've done like most of my work, you know, like that's what that's where I've done most of, of my musical work, of my my work as a, as a person. That's where like I've done the most growing. Like I still feel like I have time to go back to Ricardo and like figure that out in, in regards to my daughter, in regards to just like a, a different kind of life. Like black is just who I've been. That's been my uniform for a long time. And in addition to being my stage name, it's just, I don't know, it's become like more than half of who I am. Tell me about your career. Now, you're also a very young age artist as well. Now, you've, someone said, recently become a, a dad as well. You've got some commitments, family commitments at home as well. So how does that help you in shaping your career and make, balancing your international tours as well? Uh, it just teaches you a lot about responsibility, a lot about perspective, um, and a lot about just like not making any kind of excuse for anything, like clarity. You know, like I, I make sure I say exactly what I mean. I do exactly what I'm supposed to do, and I lead the example that you know I want to lead for my daughter. For your daughter as well. Now, big message out there to other artists, emerging artists. A bit of a tip and advice uh, from your side, making use of digital world. What would it be? Um, when you think you're good, strive to be great. When you think you're great, strive to be amazing. When you think you're amazing, strive to be perfect. And when you think you're perfect, just know you're not perfect. You know. So every day I wake up, I wake up and I try to get better. I think that's what anybody. So that was an interesting talk to feature on the Afternoon Karak Show right here on Pulse 95. Pulse 95.